All right, so now we're back. Uh, we've sketched our areas and the system has gone through uh, all of the calculation of the areas in terms of what we've had sketched. Uh, and they've started putting some stuff together so that we've got uh, the um, game room measurements and master bedroom measurements that you know affect the calculation of equipment. Uh, and so it's kicked that out for us. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the equipment and readings. You'll see here where we actually got the rooms that we had lined up. Oops, sorry guys, I actually bumped that. Uh, but you'll see here we've got the rooms that we had lined up. Uh, on the right, we've got our outside control, our inside unaffected, and our AC area so we can put in our readings. We also have our equipment recommendations here in red, so you can click on this button. Uh, and you can see for this particular situ situation, now we've got equipment recommendations in red that's flagging us, telling us, hey, we've got an issue uh, that the rooms have been calculated, but there's no equipment set yet. And so right now, it recommends one DHU, an air scrubber, and six wall fans, and we have zero actually set. Uh, and so there's a flag, right? There's a problem here. Um, so that's intentional. Um, here, we also have the game room. Uh, it shows recommended center fans and wall fans and actual. So we know where these two fans are, or these six fans are supposed to go in these two rooms uh, and have that available for us as well. I'm going to close this briefly. I'm going to go back to the dashboard on the screen so that you'll see here that flag is showing up here as well. Equipment deployed does not match recommendations. Uh, all of this is part of just the warning process, part of the automated business processes that can be established. So you can have this, you don't have to have it. It really is contingent upon how you want to run your business. Uh, we just want to show you that the opportunity is available for us to do that. So now you look here, and this Joe Smith job, uh, if you look in one of our previous videos where we were actually just setting up the drying was white, now it's red. It's showing that we have a chamber equipment mismatch button. So this job is flagged um, pretty much throughout the system as a result. Uh, so we want to make sure that you see that. Notice we have flags for other things. You guys have seen that in other videos. Uh, I'm not going to go into that now. Uh, but we're going to go back into this Joe Smith job. We're going to go back into drying. We're going back to our test chamber that we're working in. And now we're in equipment and readings. So if we wanted to put uh, inside unaffected, let's say it's uh, 72 degrees in there and the relative humidity is 55. Um, let's say that the AC outlet is uh, 55 degrees and the relative humidity is 65. And we can save that. So now we have some readings here and that's gonna to start to develop into our reading history. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come into a room and we're going to click on that particular room. Um, they, now we have our horizontal surface of our floor, our vertical surfaces that we've actually put information in. Um, and so what is asking us to do now is put in our moisture content reading. So this is going to be vital in regards to actually finalizing some of the full calculation in the new ICRC S500 standard uh, because you're looking for the square foot of affected area at this point. Uh, so this dimension on your height is going to make a difference in some of that once you get over two foot. Um, that sort of thing kind of plays into the role. Um, so the initial recommendations and calculations that you have are going to be very close to what you're going to wind up with, um, but there will be some situations and instances where that gets altered as a result, uh, and we'll make sure that the system lets you know that also. But let's say, for instance, that we're at 60% moisture content, and let's say in this environment we've got... 85% uh, of the floor effect. Um, the reason you're doing that, uh, just from a calculation standpoint, is uh, the math on the system allows us to just go point to point, but not all of this room is wet. Uh, what could happen is this could be that the water actually kind of does this in a little map that I'm looking at, um, or maybe it follows the narrow and goes just along the walls. Uh, or an environment where it actually floods outward, you would see that also. And so we're actually giving these percentage effective for that very reason. Um, if you need more information on that, need more detail, then we'd be happy to go over that with you uh, live so we can walk through that with you as well. Okay, vertical surfaces, now we're dealing with our walls. So based on the way we drew this room, it actually put in the uh, wall, the walls, and this wall being wall zero. Um, so what I want you to do is just notice that as I go through this, it changes the one that's highlighted in the green. So that lets us see, hey, this is the wall that I'm taking my reading on. So you don't have to set out uh, some protocol with your team to say, hey, when you walk in the door, the first door to the left, or first wall to the left is wall one, uh, and work your way around. It's established here for you. So there's a little, there's less guessing in that environment. 
let's say for instance this uh, wall is 30 percent to um, 18 inches uh, and it's somewhere in that range throughout the course of this room so we're going to call it you know 28 29 30 for you know 18 19 20 inches so we're just going to put this all in for you real quick Um, and so that gives me, notice it's still, it's moving, the sketch is moving with me so that I can uh, adjust and know which one I'm looking at. Uh, just kind of one of those cool features to let you do that. And we're going to save that. So now we have this, uh, these readings saved. Uh, we're going to have some reading history that's starting to be developed so that we can build a report from that. Uh, and then we have an equipment tab. So what's happening here is it's recommending we have three fans. Um, generally speaking, we would have our fans right beside us. So if you have an uh, item number, a, a serial number, an inventory number, or whatever you put in, we can put that in for your system as well, uh, including all the detail about that particular piece of equipment. We'll show you that in the equipment manager button uh, video. So we wanna make sure you see that video as well. Uh, but for the purpose of this one, we're gonna look for a fan. So let's say, hey, we're looking for a fan. Uh, fan 101 is an actual air mover. Notice here, I've got, uh, some of these fans that are showing to be on a separate job. Um, but in this case, I've got fan 101 is available. It's on my truck right next to me. So I go ahead and click on that fan and I drag it up into this environment and I set it inside that room. Um, the type of fan that that is actually has an hour meter on it. So we're gonna say, hey, this fan has 100 hours on this meter. The reason we're gonna do that is uh, inevitably you're gonna have jobs that uh, it took five days to dry, you're getting yelled at by the insurance company because it's taking too long to dry, and you wanna know why. Uh, the system can help identify that because uh, out of every 24 hour period, the fans are only running for 10 hours. Uh, so that's pretty good validation if you put that information in and your fans have that, great. If they don't have that, uh, we can turn that feature off and uh, you can simply work through the process of understanding where your equipment is and what's going on with it. But when they're hour meter present, we want to let you know that we can track that and uh, make that life a little bit better for you. So that's where that stands. Uh, and then we're going to just go ahead and, you know, it's just calling for three. Let's go ahead and just put three in. So stick another one there. Put in another hour meter. Let's see, this one had 75 hours on it. It was 75, but 75. And then we'll put in our final fan here. And, uh, we'll say that's our final fan uh, and let's say this one had 200 hours on it and save that so you'll notice uh, in this uh, it recommended three and now it's showing we have a wall count of three um, so that's the first part of uh, getting the system set up and ready to go what would happen let me actually show you kind of how that works so we close that um, the equipment recommendations very quickly will uh, clear itself and refresh itself. Uh, but let's show you exactly how this looks. Now, um, in this point, this room is now white because it's no longer an issue. The equipment recommendation flag is still present because this room doesn't have what it's supposed to be having. And if I don't put a DHU in one of these two rooms, uh, it will leave the equipment recommendation uh, on the high end. So let's go ahead and for uh, right quick put in the master bedroom also put in this information let's say it's uh, 40 percent on 50 percent of the floor and we're gonna say 18 to 20 Oops. 18 20 18 this one is really cool because it's exact same moisture content throughout the entire thing And uh, there we have it. Save that one. Again, more reading history being developed on this particular environment. Uh, and now back to equipment. So in this case, this is actually still recommending three wall fans. So let's come in here and look for some fans. We're gonna move this fan here. But in an hour meter, this fan has one hour on it. It's a brand new fan. And then now we need to look for um, let me go ahead and pull one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this fan. Typically, we would hope you would never need to watch this process happen. I'm going to pull this fan from this Danny Strong job. And it says, do you want to move this equipment item to master bedroom? The idea being the system believes that this particular fan is on a job called the Danny Strong job. Uh, and so it's questioning 
should you be moving this fan uh, or is this fan actually located someplace else? If you have this fan physically present with you, clearly it's not still on its other job. So maybe somebody forgot to pull equipment, maybe there were some other issues that had taken place, but we're just trying to alert you as much as possible about what is going on. We're gonna go ahead and say yes for this purpose. Um, and then we're gonna say if this fan has 20 hours. And then we're going to move this particular fan in and set this fan here uh, and say this fan has 10 hours. Now, one of the things that you can do, um, I'm gonna to touch on one of these fans and I can actually move these fans around. So click on this fan uh, and I can actually remove this fan if I want. Um, I can make it a uh, center fan or a wall fan. Um, and so I just want you to see that there are options about what you wanna do on these particular pieces of equipment. Uh, you kind of move this stuff around so you can actually highlight each one of these and see what it is um, and uh, make those things work for you the way you want them to work for you. So you can move them around, uh, adjust them, set them, do whatever you want to with them. Make sure you have them placed in the right locations depending on the drying environment, uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, uh, we can still close this out, uh, but if we do, we're going to have a flag still present. Let's go ahead and find a dehumidifier. Let's say we've got a uh, Phoenix 200 Max in this environment. We're going to drag this into this room uh, and it says, hey, I need this information from this dehumidifier. So the inlet temperature uh, we're going to say is um, um, 75 degrees, relative humidity at uh, 65, and this dehumidifier has 120 hours on it. Um, the outlet is, uh, it's been on for just a little while, so the outlet is at um, 85. Let's say the relative humidity is um, 25, um, and we've got a GPP of 45. Let's, uh, let me adjust this just a little bit. Let's make this 35, uh, GPP of 64. Let's see what happens uh, when we do this. We've got alarms set so that if this grain depression is not in range with what the industry says the equipment standards can produce, then it's going to bark at me a little bit. Um, and off the top of my head, I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah, it looks like uh, we did that. So the grain depression is out of range. An acceptable range is 33, uh, and this one was 22. So it's telling me, hey, you need to acknowledge that there's an issue potentially with this dehumidifier. Uh, it could be that it simply has not re really been running long enough, um, but I acknowledge that. And, um, and then we're set and ready to go uh, with that dehu, and I'll show you what that does in just a moment. Uh, and then we're going to look here for an air scrubber, and we're going to bring in a Guardian Pro. Drop the Guardian Pro into the job uh, and put in the hour meter. 15 hours. Hit save. Um, and so now it's saved that. And um, we're going to close this out and refresh the screen. And you're going to notice these are both white. The equipment recommendations flag is now gone from the uh, drying chamber. It's also gone here where it was previously in the job. And when you go back here to the Joe Smith job, now it's now white again. Uh, it's because we've met the criteria that we established as what needed to be done uh, in order to uh, remove the flex. So that's uh, a little bit of detail in regards to actually setting part of the drying uh, up with the equipment. Uh, and we'll get to some of the next pieces here in just a moment.